Welcome to Microsoft Mechanics Live. Coming up, we're joined by Chuck Friedman, the engineering leader of the Microsoft Edge team, for an update on the latest enterprise updates to Edge, including the compatibility for modern sites with Chromium, and also for legacy sites using integrated IE mode. Also, we're going to show you your options to deploy, configure, and manage Edge installs at scale, the breakthrough security features to keep your users and data protected, as well as unique custom search experiences that are in Edge that serve up internal content for your organization, front and center, above the content available on the public internet using Microsoft Search. So everybody, please give a warm welcome to Mr. Chuck Friedman from the Edge team. Thank you. Thank you. It's actually it's awesome to be here. It's my first time on the mechanic stage, and I'm excited to get into it. First question. So you made a really big move going to Chromium open source project for Microsoft Edge on the desktop. What was behind this decision? So that does really cut to the chase. There's a few things that really drove this decision. About 18 months ago, we kicked off a set of conversations with a broad set of users. We talked to end users. We talked to developers. We talked to IT managers. And we talked to educators. And they came back with three very clear messages. First, compatibility is still an issue. It's different than the compatibility that we expected. It's not just about compatibility with the modern web, but it's also about how the legacy web and the modern web are going to work together. Second, security and privacy is actually a growing concern. There's real problems that we need to get after there. And then finally, people are doing more and more with the web. And as a result, there are productivity gaps when using web technology. People want to be able to assemble web content together and produce additional content or collaborate. And so this is a rich set of problems. They felt very Microsoft for us to solve. And so we had a, a real challenge. We had to figure out how did we want to get after them. OK, so how did Chromium then help address these types of challenges? So joining the Chromium open source project really accelerated our ability to nail the fundamentals. Chromium is the de facto standard for the web and really sets the bar for modern web compatibility. Rather than duplicating the efforts to build our own version of a compatible web, we're now able to contribute new capabilities and address a new set of needs. Further, adopting Chromium allowed us to deliver our browser across platforms. And this also means that we can ensure that the latest version of the Edge browser is available on all versions of Win 10. And, and something that we heard quite a bit when we went out and talked to IT managers, we can deliver it on Windows Server and the LTSC. And then, of course, the open source nature of Chromium meant even if a user isn't using Edge, we can actually make contributions that make the, uh, uh, the web better for everybody. All right, so let's dive into the contributions. What are some of the things that we've actually done to contribute to the project? Yeah, so since announcing the project last December, we've made over 1,600 commits in a variety of areas. At a high level, we sort of looked at the things that Edge did that was great, and then we wanted to bring them to the Chromium code base. We're particularly proud of the contributions we've made around accessibility. So the in-market Edge product has a perfect score on the HTML5 accessibility test. And we're on path to reach the same score with the new Edge. It's been a great experience actually partnering with the Chromium engineering team and uh, members of the project across other companies to make the web platform more accessible for everybody. Just a quick example, with our new contributions, all text image, like you see here, will appear. We've also done a ton of work in areas around screen reader support, high contrast, video caption styling, smooth scrolling, and touch interaction. So it's really great to see how the team's addressing all these different fundamentals. And all this is going to really help with compatibility of modern sites, but we're in a pretty big room with a lot of admins, I think, here in the audience. Not every single internal site is modern. So I've read actually around 60%, I think, have legacy code dependencies. What have we done to help there? Yeah, absolutely. So again, this is sort of the additional challenge that we found when we started talking about compatibility. The new version of Edge has a feature called Internet Explorer mode. And that is designed to address this exact problem. As you know, IE has been in the market for over two decades. And over that period, most companies have built mission-critical applications that use IE technology, such as ActiveX controls. Right, and these apps aren't broken. They still work. So there's lots of different investments that are still made in these apps. But when you click on them from a modern browser, a lot of times you end up popping a second window open that's got IE 11. Right. I mean, the, the, the fundamental problem is this leaves users needing two browsers. So here I actually have my desktop showing. This is a state that users often find themselves in. They started out in a modern browser. In this case, it was Edge. And then they launched into a legacy application. 
that actually created um, an instance of IE11 running. Now, what I want to show, and this, by the way, this, this site is uh, based on Silverlight, and it's quite useful. It's the way that Fabricam, our favorite company, um, can schedule customer visits. So I'm going to go to that exact same website, but I'm going to do it in the new edge. Okay. So here I am. I'm going to go to a Fabricam portal. I'm going to schedule a visit. And what you'll notice is it opens up just as you would expect it inside the Modern Edge browser. Um, frankly, the only way a user would know that they're running IE mode is if they look up and they see the little uh, icon in the corner. Right. And one of the things I think with emulation, emulation doesn't work well if it's kind of like popping up the second window. It's got to be fairly subtle. The user can't know that they've kind of shifted context or rendering in this case. And we've kept a really subtle way in terms of showing that it's in IE 11 kind of IE mode, but it's actually still within the context of the same window, the same browser. That's right. And actually, we've worked to make it easy for you all to set up as well. So setting up enterprise mode um, just takes advantage of the enterprise mode site list that many of you have already implemented. And then, of course, there's the big moment. If I navigate away, instead of navigating to in, within IE 11, I just navigate back, and I'm still in my modern browser. Very cool stuff. So all without leaving the context of Edge, you can do all of the rendering, everything you need to within the same spot. It's pretty amazing. But does any site that works inside of IE 11 continue to work in the new Edge? Yes, although it's important to note that IE mode works on platforms on which IE 11 is supported. And it might be helpful just to understand how we enable it. The full IE 11 is actually running hidden in the background. And we're conceptually remoting the content of the tab into Edge. It's also worth noting that we're putting our money where our mouth is on this one. We've announced the Microsoft Edge Aperture program as part of Microsoft Fast Track. If you're an E3 or E5 customer and your site runs on IE11, we promise that it will run in the new version of Edge. If it doesn't and it's a product problem, my team is committed to fixing it. And if it's an issue with the app, a Microsoft engineer will come and help fix the app so that it just works. Ultimately, we want you to have the best of the modern web while being able to migrate your legacy sites forward, but on your schedule. OK, so we've addressed compatibility with so many IT admins, I think, that are watching. Why don't we switch gears to edge deployment, something I'm really fond of. What's new there? So this is your area of expertise, and I'm going to rely on that in a second. Our goal is to make edge the easiest browser to deploy. That's why we support all the common operating system platforms. And while we're making it easy to manage Edge across all of those as well. As you might expect, we support Windows Group policy templates, the Mac OS templates, and a variety of management tools. But really, this is your area of expertise. And I'd love it if you'd just show everybody how it all works. All right, so great. So I'm going to go and I'm going to show you kind of the things that you can do here real quick. So we're in System Center Configuration Manager. Just to note, I'm on 1906 at the moment. In 1910 TP, it's actually even easier than what I'm going to show you here. But it's just an MSI. So you can use standard MSI exec commands. So I want to show you a couple packages. There's both a 32 and a 64-bit native uh, package. If you go into the requirements uh, and look at the operating system type, this is where it gets interesting because you can target all these different versions of Windows. So right now, we see that we've got Windows Server 2019, 2016, 2012 R2. We can even target things down to 20, 2008. And even um, Windows 10, 8.1, and Windows 7, all with the same package. The nice thing is I can deploy it. I can set up my packages and get it to all these different machines. But it gets even better than that. Because if you're using Intune, I'd encourage everybody to set up uh, kind of cloud-attached management between Config Manager and Intune. The nice thing is, with your apps there, it's even better than, than you'd probably expect. So if you go into your, to your apps view, now, normally, and you've probably maybe you've done this with Mac OS, you have to take the PKG file, convert it to a .intune Mac file, then import it into Intune, and use the Mac actually as the conversion mechanism. Here, it's so much easier. So I'm going to go ahead and um, I'm going to go into Apps, into Mac OS, and I click and add a Mac OS app. And the cool thing is, it's just right here as a normal Mac OS um, preview right there. You don't have to worry about doing anything. It's already packaged up for you in the right format. No extra work to be done. The nice thing is, also, if you want to deep link or, or deploy from things like Google Play for the um, phone-based apps or the App Store for iOS, those can be done through Intune as well. Super easy. And also, if you've got other MDM solutions or systems, uh, systems management tools, it's an MSI. All those will work as well to deploy Edge. So wherever you've got it, whatever tools you have, they will just work. 
And, and again, you know, we really are trying to nail all of the fundamentals to make this easy. So we're trying to address compatibility. We feel good about the number of operating systems we're going to be delivering on. Um, we feel good about sort of the, the unique capability we're adding with IE mode. But when we, we talk to customers, we often reach this moment and they say, OK, we kind of get what you're doing, but the legacy stuff is sort of going away. Um, what is it that you're going to do that is new and different, and where are you going with Edge? And frankly, we asked ourselves that same question when we started the project. And it came back to those other conversations we had with customers, the meaningful next set of problems that users are facing. You know, things like security and privacy, which are growing. And then, really, how do we make productivity for the web world class? And we love those kinds of problems at Microsoft. Right. So can we drill more into the, the things that we've done in terms of making this version of Edge even better in this case? You know, this won't surprise anybody, but let's start with the area of security and compliance. Um, there are many facets to this problem. And we've thought about four primary attack vectors. The user, the browser, the corporate network, and corporate data. And we're building solutions across these vectors holistically. So let's take a look at a couple of examples. Um, to begin, we've integrated Microsoft Defender Smart Screen across all platforms, which has industry-leading protection and keeps users from accessing malicious sites. And yes, you get to look at this lovely red screen when you run into a site that uh, could be a challenge. We received literally trillions of signals through the Microsoft Intelligence Security Graph and use that intelligence to protect each and every PC running Edge. Next, we have Application Guard for Edge, which uses virtualization-based security to run the browser in an isolated container. And what runs in the container stays in the container, neutralizing the threat. Right, so as an admin, if you um, haven't set this up, it's really easy, because in this case, a site that's uh, trusted, if it's not trusted, I'll say, we'll assume that it's going to be bad. So why don't you show us what it looks like in the case of Application Guard. OK, so here I am as a user. I'm going to go into a site called Spikes and Valleys. This is a, a website where you can um, buy camping equipment. Now, there's nothing wrong with this site in particular, but it's not something the IT manager necessarily would have known to list as a trusted site. So it automatically opens up in a container. And I can tell I'm in that container, because if I click up here, I see that I'm in Application Guard. So if this site did contain malware, mm -hmm. then it wouldn't have had an impact on the system or, frankly, any of the network data. We are so sort of serious about this that this is another place where we're applying a bounty program. So there's a bounty of up to $350,000 if you can break through this. And of course, the promise that we're making is because everything is running in an isolated container, we're protecting your network and your corporate data as well. Right, and with Application Guard, all the settings can be enabled, like you can see here with, uh, with group policy. So everything that you'd, you'd kind of expect in terms of how to configure it and what cases to open up uh, Application Guard, that can be configured here. And also, again, kind of back to our MDM points, also through cr uh, cloud or CSP files, you'll be able to deploy those policies over things like Intune as well. But there's a big connection, I think, between security and privacy. So why don't we talk about what we've done in terms of amplifying privacy? Yeah, absolutely. So Modern Browser uses a lot of services to enable its functionality. And Chromium, of course, is no exception. Um, one thing that we did was to disable all of the services that were nat natively built into Chromium. And we replaced them with services that meet Microsoft's services agreement. For example, users expect a browser to sync across devices. But we know that it makes many of you as IT managers nervous. Basically, what we've done is made it easy for a user to log into any device with their AAD account synchronize password, form fill data, or tabs, but we store all of that information in Azure. And as a result, it conforms to the policies that you have as your tenant, and you end up being in control. So if you feel good about keeping your data in Microsoft 365 or Azure, you should feel great about your users using Edge. Right, so OK, so we've covered compatibility now, manageability, security, compliance, privacy. We made a lot of these controls and the things that we've done for admins, but what about end users? We've, we've kind of started with all the admin stuff. Have we made it better to browse the web and use it in terms of all the time that people spend normally in the browser for end users as well? Yeah, this is the, the uh, needle in a haystack problem that I mentioned earlier. And I'm actually super glad you asked about this. Um, after talking to enterprise customers, we found this problem of users not being able to, they knew that the content was on their websites, but they couldn't get there. And so we went out and researched it. 
and found that, no, it turns out people want their intranet to work more like the internet. But of course, there's security risks, and it's not easy, it hasn't been easy to set up. So we've really focused on solving that problem. In general, people spend time searching for corporate information or tools, and so we've integrated that into a very familiar UI, the, a new tab page, and then we've created a search that works not just against the internet, but also the corporate internet. The goal is getting the user to what's next. And so we've incorporated the applications that you may have wanted to set up. Mm -hmm. um, we've brought the Microsoft uh, graph information to the site. And then I'm going to go into search. And here I'm going to search again, not just the internet, but also the intranet. So first search I'm going to do, let's say I want to take vacation time. So I type in vacation. Always a good topic. Always a good topic. All right. Um, and what you'll see is a set of results at a very obscure uh, URL that will get me to the corporate vacation site. But it gets even better. It does get even better. So let's say I'm looking for a file about marketing. Everybody looks for files about marketing, but let's, let's have a look. And there what you'll go. see is it actually brings up a set of files that are available to me and only me on the internet. So I can't, get to, yes. I can't get information that I shouldn't be able to get to from the internet. Right. And then finally, and I end up using this one quite a bit at work, I'm going to do a search for a colleague. I'm going to go search for the famous Adele. And no one knows this, but Adele actually works at Fabricam. Yeah, so if you look, I have Adele, the internet star, yep. but then I have Adele Vance, the internal retail manager, who is also a star, and I can get to all of her information, okay. um, her organization, the files we might be working on together. And then, of course, what's super cool, as I'm walking to her office and can't remember where she's located, I can do that same search phone. All right, let's find Adele. There's and there the... she is. We got Adele. All right, and Adele comes up. Same Adele Vance. Nice thing is we're logged into both the instance that's on the, on the PC and the phone. All right. Not bad. This is working on Android, iOS, very cool stuff. Um, you get to have the same experience across devices. Yeah, and, and the cool thing is you don't have to go to a, a company portal to get to the information. You just um, go to the search box and operate the way that a user would expect to. Right, and the in in integration there is awesome, but I want to go and geek out a little bit on the admin side again. So you go. If, <laughs> if you want to actually get all the stuff set up, so basically I'll switch over from Intune back into Microsoft 365 admin portal. Everybody knows this different, this location. So if you go into settings, you can go into Microsoft Search. Microsoft Search has its own admin center experience. Just to show you, a couple things that we actually do is we kind of start you out and help you in terms of getting something set up so that search works once you've turned on and configured it. Now, if we go to suggestions, the nice thing is we've actually taken and made 17 suggestions, because I did HR, and I'll show that in a sec. But all the suggestions that we have for common enterprise searches that people use. Now I'm going to go ahead and show you something that's actually that I just configured uh, on Sunday. Uh, so if you go into Published and I click on HR, Here's what you configure. So you can see that tile like we saw in Chuck's screen earlier that, we're, that, we, that you'd see as part of a search, the different keywords. So people will search for things like HR, W2. Um, you know, if it's, you can do different languages, Einstellung and Mitarbeiterhandbuch and all these things that we have in German. And I can also target it to the right groups, the device types, the PCs, platforms. My, one of my favorite things is Power App. So I can even expose a Power App. For example, if I want to book time off, I can do that straight from here. So it's super easy to set up. And I've got kind of the search experience set up like we saw in Chuck's machine just in a couple of minutes. And it actually works instantly once you set this up and configure it. It's worth noting, one of the beauties of Microsoft Search is that when users are searching within your corporate network, all that information remains yours. Nothing goes beyond your boundary. Really great, great experiences are really extending across the different platforms, the devices, and the apps. It's really true for Microsoft Search as well as the new Edge browser. So really, really good stuff here. Yeah, and of course, there's a ton more that we'd like to show you. Um, but even more important, we want to hear from you. Our goal is to make Microsoft Edge and Bing the browser and search engine for business. So our request is please join the Edge Insider program and give us your feedback. You can get to us at aka.ms forward slash Edge Enterprise. And then you can see everything that we've documented um, and presented today at that site. And then finally, to learn more about how you, to deploy 
go to aka.ms forward slash deploy edge. And again, if you're using Microsoft 365, you can enable Microsoft Search just like I showed from the admin portal. You can try it out, kind of expand it over time to more users, more devices. And of course, you're going to want to keep watching Microsoft Mechanics and follow the latest updates that we have beyond the documentation that's here. And thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you next time. Goodbye for now.